Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello, I'm Pastor Sam and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm so glad you joined me on the program today. Did you know that in the oldest book of the Bible, God asked the question, how forcible are right words? In fact, life and death are in the power of the tongue, the Bible says. Jesus, the ultimate authority in the universe, said, by a man's words, he shall be justified, and by a man's words, he shall be condemned. Today, I want to speak to you on the subject, the power of confession. What comes out of your mouth will ultimately settle the score with the enemy of your soul, Satan. So make sure you say what God says in His Word so that you can have all the promises that God has given to you. I want you to stay tuned for the next half hour because God has something special that He wants to deposit in your life. I want you to call 804-744-8881 and someone standing by that will share with you uh, some information about Victory Tabernacle, and we want to send to you, free and postpaid, some very special gifts that will minister to you and your entire family. Absolutely free and postpaid, as just a token of our appreciation. Thank you so much for tuning in. So again, the number to call is 804-744-8881. Well, let's get ready now and go into that service where the power of God is at work and that service is already in progress. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 10. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him. Turn to somebody and say, it is well. Now turn over in your Bible to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. The writer of Hebrews says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. You have 206 bones, 600 muscles. You have a circulatory network of 60,000 miles of tubing transporting the life-giving flow of blood to every part of your body. You have a brain, you have a, I guess you have a brain. <laughs> you should have a brain. Touch somebody and say, you have a brain. You have a spinal cord. And you have this vast network of nerves with the capacity to send stimuli and impulses at the rate of 350 feet per second. No wonder the Bible says that you and I are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's impressive, isn't it? And yet the most powerful member of your anatomy is your tongue. Because what comes out of your mouth will ultimately settle the conflict with the enemy of your soul. No wonder the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 24, life and death are in the power of the tongue. No wonder in the oldest book of the Bible Job says in Job 6 and 25, life and death are how forcible are right words. No wonder that Jesus, the ultimate authority, said in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 24, that what you say will determine whether you're justified or condemned. No wonder, he said in the book of Mark, that you can have whatever you say. You know, there is a fascinating story in 2 Kings chapter 4. There's this story of a couple. They were from Shunem, and they were elderly. And they loved Elisha and his servant Gehazi. And there's nothing wrong with loving your minister. And she was able to convince her husband to build an apartment on their house for Elisha. And the Bible says that she was a great woman. 
Let me tell you, any time a woman can convince her husband to work around the house, she is a great woman. And the prophet Elisha sent Gehazi to ask them, is there something that can be done for you because you've been so kind? And she said, well, my husband and I are elderly and we have no children and I've always wanted a son. Now listen to this. The man of God says that according to the season of life. Now this is really cutting it close. He said, nine months from today, nine months from today, you and your son or you and your husband will embrace a son. Nine months from today. And sure enough, a little boy was born into their home. And you know what happened? The little boy died. Now stay with me. Something happened, either a sunstroke or he hit his head and he went in the house and he died. Some of you have received a promise from God, but the devil has convinced you that that promise is dead. Some of you, God told you a long time ago that your husband would be saved and he's meaner than a striped snake. Some of you, you got a word from the Lord that your children would be saved and yet they're rebellious and in and out of jail and they're hooked on drugs and you think, when is it ever going to happen? Some of you were told that you would be healed and yet it seems like you're getting worse and you're not getting better. Don't give up on God because God will never give up on you. It is not over until God says it's over. And God doesn't say that it's over. The Bible tells us that this woman put her son on the prophet's bed. And she went to find Elisha. And when Elisha recognized her and he saw her coming, he sent Gehazi out to ask her three questions. He said, ask her, how is it with yourself? How is it with you? How are you doing? How's your husband? How's your son? And every time she answered, it is well. Say that with me. It is well. You know, most of us, when we get in a problem or, or get in a situation, we have a problem, what do we do? We don't say it's well. We say, why me? Why now? Why this? Why does it always happen to me? Why am I always the one that has the problem? Why is it everybody else seems to skate by and I have a problem and I don't know what to do and it just seems like it always happens to me. If something bad is going to happen, it happens to me. Be careful what you say. This woman, because of her faith confession, was able to receive a miracle and God raised up her son and gave her son back to, her par to his parents because the, of the way she answered the prophet. It is well. It is well. Faith has a voice. The Bible says in the New Testament, we receive the spirit of faith. We believe, therefore, we speak. The Bible says, let the weak say, I'm strong. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Any enemy that comes against us one way shall flee from us seven ways. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned. Thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph over the enemy. The Bible says that God will always make grace abound toward us, that we always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. In Ephesians 3 and 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. We are truly more than conquerors through Christ. You see, a conqueror is somebody who fights and wins. More than a conqueror means that somebody else fought and won and you enjoy the benefits. You know, I saw a fellow, you've seen these, what do they call it, full contact, uh, uh, what, what do they call that, where they, they fight with their feet and their fist and their kick, well, not kickboxing, even beyond that, extreme, extreme fighting, cage fighting, crazy fighting. You ever see that on TV when you're channel surfing? You see that? Sometimes you say, oh, yes, you do, Shirley. Don't you shake your head. I know you've seen that. <laughs> and so 
I, I saw this fella that he fought, and they, I don't know if they bit him. I don't know if they scratched him. I don't know if they poked him in the eye. I don't know what all they did to him. They slammed him down, and they kicked him with their, his knee, fella did. and, and, and he, he, But finally, he was able to prevail, and he won. Now, the other fella uh, looked worse than he did. And when they, they were talking about he, he won something like $50,000, and and so he's standing up, he smiles real big, he's missing two or three teeth, and, and, and he's bloody and bruised, and his nose is broken, and, and, and he's got that, you know, check in his hand, and, you know, I got $50,000, I won, I'm a conqueror, and his little old wife, about that tall, about that big around, looked like she could change clothes in a milkshake straw, and she'd come out there and took the check out of his hand. I saw, brother, you're the conqueror. She's more than a conqueror. Amen. <laughs> See? That's what he, and Jesus fought the battle. Jesus whipped the devil, but you and I are enjoying the benefits. But if we don't learn this power of confession, we'll never be able to enjoy the victory over the devil, over sickness, and over disease. Be careful what you say. The key to receiving your miracle is to confess the Word of God. In the book of, of Mark, chapter 11, Jesus has uh, uh, this talk with his disciples, and he says to them, have the faith of God. Have the God kind of faith. In other words, God, when he does something, he speaks first. In fact, God never does anything until he speaks. If you go to Genesis chapter 1 in the week of creation, no less than nine times, you find these words, and God said, and then it, and it was. And so he's saying, have the faith of God. Have the God kind of faith. Faith that has a voice. And Jesus, when he came to this earth, was the perfect manifestation of God the Father, and he showed us how to do it. Jesus uh, talked even to trees. Jesus was on his way uh, to a preaching engagement, and he saw a tree, a fig tree that had leaves on it, and he wanted some figs. And the tree had leaves of profession with no fruit of possession. Now, I, that's a sermon in itself. I'm not going to go there. But Jesus was hungry, and there were no figs, and he cursed the fig tree. Now, the tree huggers don't like this. The environmentalists get all shook up about this. But Jesus sacrificed a tree for an object lesson to illustrate a sermon. He cursed the tree. He spoke to the tree and commanded it to dry up. When he came back from his preaching engagement, there was that tree on its side, roots in the air. And the disciples said, wow. Jesus, look what happened. You spoke to the tree and cursed it, and it's di it died. And Jesus said, you can too if you'll learn the power of confessing the Word of God. Now, most of us, will speak to the tree, but then we want to check every 15 minutes to see if it's looking sick. You know, I cursed you. Why, aren't you, why, why didn't the leaves die right away? And Jesus just did it and walked on his way and, and because he knew the power of faith confession. Jesus spoke to trees. He cursed the fig tree and it dried up. Jesus knew how to talk to the devil. When he was tempted and he was fasting, like we've been fasting, except he fasted for 40 days in the wilderness. And the devil came to him and tempted him. And Jesus used the word of God to defeat the devil. He said, it is written. Jesus cast out devils with his word, the Bible says. For the very inception of his ministry in Capernaum, there's a demon-possessed man jumped up, and Jesus just spoke the word and cast the devils out of him. He found the demoniac of Gadara that had 6,000 demons in him, and he cast those demons out with the word. And by the way, this has got nothing to do with my message, but I'm wondering if you could get 6,000 demons in one man, how much of the Holy Ghost can you get in somebody? And Jesus cast out 6,000 demons with a word. Glory to God. 
Jesus even healed the sick with the word. In Psalm 107 in verse 20, it says that he sent his word and healed them. And in Matthew 8, a man came to Jesus that had a servant that was dying. And he said, I'm a man of authority. I have others under me and of those who are above me. And if somebody above me speaks a word, I obey him. But when I give a command, those who are under me obey me. And you have all power. You have all authority. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. But if you speak the word... Hallelujah. My servant will be healed. And he did and he was. Glory to God. Jesus knew how to talk the talk of faith. He came up to a tomb one day. The stone had been rolled back and his friend Lazarus was in there and he shouted, Lazarus, come forth. And he came out. He's going to do it again. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. He expects us to follow his example. Matthew 16, Jesus talking about the church. He said, I give you power, authority over all the power of the enemy. He said, I'm going to give you power to bind and to release. You are the church and the combined forces of the seat of the devil's authority will not be sufficient to stop the church short of its divine goals and commission. But you've got to use the keys of the kingdom. And one of those keys is the word of God. You've got to know how to speak out the word of God in a situation. Now, somebody said, well, pastor, I do that all the time. Somebody asked me how I'm doing. I say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Glory to God, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm walking in health. Listen, that is not a test of your faith. That's a greeting. Give us a break. That's not a test of your faith. That's not really necessary for you to say all that when somebody says, how's it going? The test of faith is when you are beat down by the devil. You're discouraged. You're so down low you could walk under a snake's belly with your hat on. And the devil has whipped on you and beat you up and battered you and bruised you. But you can still look up to God and say, I am who God says I am. And I have what God says I have. That's a test of faith. Not how you doing, bub. Amen. Are you still with me? Now watch this. You've got to learn how to use the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you say. But it's not just what you say. It's speaking the word of the living God. You see, you are a child of God. How many of you know you're saved? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you're redeemed, you've got a right to praise him. I want every saved person in this house. If you know you've been washed in the blood, if you know your name is written in heaven, and I don't mean in a number two with a number two pencil with a good eraser. I mean the kind of, uh, 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 of, of written in heaven like Jesus said, I give unto you eternal life and you shall never perish. How many of you know that you have passed from death unto life? You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things are new. You ought to make some noise up in here this morning. Hey, I'm saved. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven. Dear God, I wish I'd get this thing all the way up in the balcony. Amen. How many up there know you're saved? Shout yes. You know you're saved down here. Look at somebody say, I'm saved and I know I am. I've actually had people, religious people tell me, Tell me, you can't know you're saved till you get to heaven. I said, what? If you didn't know you were saved till you got to heaven, you wouldn't know you were lost till you got to hell. Think about it. This morning, I, I always come here for the uh, telecast. And by the way, the first, help me out here, I think it's the first Sunday in February, we're going to be on AM 820 at 8 o'clock in the morning. I was in the prison, preaching in the prison last Sunday night. And by the way, I'm very big in the prison. I don't know if you know that or not. They watched the telecast. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, we had a great service. It was a captive audience. But I, I just uh, told them, you know, we're going to be on radio, and they're writing it down. Yeah, 8 o'clock next Sunday. So first Sunday in February. But this morning I was, I was helping to answer the phone. I got a phone call from a fellow. What about the 12 tribes of Jacob? 
Why don't you teach about that? Why don't you teach about how the, the Europeans came and, and took the uh, country away from the Native Americans? And, and, and it just on and on. And I, I thought, you know, I got, more, uh, I got bigger fish to fry than this. And about that time, Pastor Eric came in. I said, hold on just a minute. I've got an expert on the 12 tribes. Here he is. And I had it. <laughs> You know what? I'm not interested in 12 tribes. Amen. I'm just interested in getting to heaven. I'm interested in being a child of God. I'm interested in knowing I'm saved. Amen. I'm not interested in the 12 tribes. I'm not interested in your tribe. I'm not interested in your nationality. I'm not in interested in your ethnicity. I'm interested in being born again. I belong to God. That's all I need to know. I'm saved and I know I'm saved. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3 and 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us. So I've got to learn how to confess the word of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Isaiah 55, 10, 11 says, For as the rain cometh down, the snow from heaven returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. I I believe that when you speak the word of God, you will have what the word of God says. Amen. I'm not getting no help up in here today. Now watch this. I heard that on the radio today. I thought I'd try that out. <laughs> Worked about as good for me as it did him. Anyway, I believe that you can confess it as well for your family for your finances, and for your future. Say it is well one more time. That's what that woman said. Her little boy is dead on the bed. Her husband doesn't even know about it. And she's on her way to the church to tell the preacher. And the preacher says, how's it going? She said, it's well. Oh, I, I'm not going to confess that he's dead because I can confess things that were not as though they were. And we're going to turn this thing around because I'm going to confess the Word of God. He's the promise of God. God promised me that son. God gave me that son. And the devil cannot take it away. The devil cannot take what God has given to me. The devil cannot steal what God put in my hands. Amen. You know, even when, even when Abraham went to offer Isaac, and some people think that Isaac was a little boy. Abraham went to offer Isaac when he's about 30 years old. So Isaac had to cooperate in it. Stretched him out on that uh, altar and was about to take his life. Now this, is, uh, this was Abraham's thinking. Abraham said, I'm going to stick a knife in his heart, burn him up. But God's going to raise him from the dead. That's what he thought. He didn't know God was going to stop him before he actually killed him. But he said, if I kill him, God will raise him up from the dead because the devil cannot steal what God has given me. When, when uh, 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 Job began to praise the Lord after ten children died, seven sons and three daughters, he began to bless the Lord. He said, I will bless the Lord. Uh, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. God is still large and in charge. He's God all by himself, and I'm going to praise his name. God turned everything around, and in the end, he gave him twice as much as he had in the beginning. And when you look at that and you say, well, he only had ten children in the beginning, and then it said he had ten children at the end, I beg your pardon. He knew that he served a God that was eternal in the heavenlies. He said, I didn't lose the first 10. They're waiting for the resurrection. And in heaven, I'm going to have 20 children. Glory to God. So you can't rip off a child of God. Touch, touch somebody and say, you, uh, you can't be ripped off. Praise God. I'm asking you to believe God with me today. In fact, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing the Word of God. But faith is released when we confess the Word of God. And so I'm going to pray a prayer that I believe God will hear and answer. And I want you to speak it out with me. Are you ready? Let's do it together. Come on right now. You just pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
I know you love me and I know you care. You have all my answers and I'm trusting in you today. Have your way in my life. I declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord, my Savior, and my Master. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering my prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to call 804-744-8881. That's 744 744- 8881. Tell me about what God has done in your life, and we want to share with you some information that will bless you and help you and encourage you and send to you a ministry product that will be a blessing to you and your family. So please call 804 744 8881 and do it right now. You know, when you give your heart and life to Christ, that's the beginning. The most important thing to happen to you after you get saved is to find a church. Now somebody said, well, my name's written in heaven, and so I'm all right. Well, that's true, but the problem is you're not in heaven yet. You're still on earth, and you need a church, a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled church. And I want to recommend to you Victory Tabernacle. I want you to join us every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for two full hours of praise and worship and always a time of ministry around the altar in the presence of the Lord. And I bring a message from God's Word that will challenge and inspire you. Then the last Sunday night of every month, we have our miracle service at 6 p.m. And God is confirming His Word with mighty signs and wonders and miracles. Wednesday evening in our family enrichment night, we have something special for every age group and every member of the family. It's fun, it's relevant, and it's exciting. Royal Rangers for our boys, missionettes for the girls, and a dynamic youth program for teens and young adults, and I'm always teaching in the main sanctuary, so be sure to join us. I want to thank you today for being a part of our program. I want to encourage you to call again right now, 804-744-8881. When you do, we're going to send you free and postpaid a special ministry product that will be a blessing to you. So call 744-8881 and do it right now. Thank you for joining us here at Miracles Still Happen, which is a presentation of the Victory Tabernacle, Church of God. And until we're together again, just like this, remember the Bible says that faith brings the victory. And here at Victory Tabernacle, miracles still happen. Everyone struggles from time to time. It could be the loss of a loved one, the unmistakable feeling of loneliness and rejection. Maybe we're looking for a friendly smile or a warm hug from someone who really cares. Come to the church.